Let us now abstract from our previous example and provide a general definition of what a discrete time finite state Markov chain is. First, central in the description of a Markov process is the concept of a state which describes the current situation of a system we are interested in. For example, in the case of the checkout counter example, the number of customers in the queue provided the right level of information needed to define a useful state. Time is assumed to be discrete, that is, divided in discrete time steps. The system starts at time zero in an initial state and at each successive time steps the system goes from its current state to a next one chosen with some randomness. As a result, after n such transitions, the state of the system will be random, and so we can think of it as a random variable. Let's xn this random variable, that is, xn represents the state in which the system is after n transitions from an initial state in which it started to operate. As a shortcut, we may often say that xn is the state of the system at time n. We suppose that there is a finite number of possible states for the system to be in. Here, we have drawn a portion of a finite state space with m possible states labeled 1 to m using i and j as generic labels. Of course, we could think of systems with an infinite number of states, either discrete or continuous, but this is a bit more complicated and so in this course we restrict ourselves to a finite state space. Note that the initial state could itself be fixed or chosen randomly. Assume now that the system started in state 3. What will happen next? The system will evolve according to one of the possible transitions out of state 3. For example, one of these arcs. Note here that we don't have an arc from 3 to 4. As a convention, we only include arcs for transitions that can happen. Remember the checkout counter example. Because of our assumptions that no more than one person can join the queue at any time, we didn't have arcs of the type going from 1 to 3 or from 2 to 10. Also, because of the customers being served one at a time, departures were limited to one person at a time, and so no arcs of the type going from 2 to 0 or from 9 to 2. So, the next transition out of 3 can be thought of a random jump, where from state 3, the system will jump to either state 1, state 2, state J, or jump onto itself. These will be the only possibilities. We want to describe the statistics of these jumps and we will use conditional probabilities. Given that at time 0 the system is in state 3, what is the probability that it will be in state j next? These will be called transition probabilities. For example, the probability of going from 3 to 1 will be p31 here p32, here p33, and here p3j. Note that these are the only possibilities. As a result, you have p31 plus p32 plus p33 plus J will be 1. Assume that the system continues to evolve and after various different steps um, come back in 3 at time n. Again, what will happen next? Well, this property here says that the probability of going from state 3 to 1 is again P31 the same as before. In other words, 
here we will see that the chain is time homogeneous. That is, these transition probabilities will be the same irrespective of the time. So this is true for all n. And the summation that we have written here for this special case is of course general. What we have is that the priority of i to j, if you sum all of these probabilities for all possible j's, you will have 1. Now, in order for this probabilistic specification to make sense and be coherent, we need to make a big assumption about the evolution of the state of the system. This assumption, the so-called Markov property, given in words here and in mathematical statement here, is in fact the defining nature of what a Markov process is. In words, what it says is that every time the system finds itself in state 3, the transition probability of going to state 1 will always be P31 no matter how the system evolved in the past up to being in state 3. In other words, no matter what path the system has followed up to the current state, the next state transition probability will be the same independent of that past. Mathematically, conditionally on knowing your current state, having more information about the past state variables does not change the transition probability to your next state. So in other words, the probability distribution of the next state xn plus 1 depends on the past only through the value of the present state xn. So you can see that as a definition of the transition probability and that property, that equality from here to here being the Markov property. For this property to hold in any modeling application, you need to choose your state carefully. You want to ensure that the information contained in the description of your state captures all the relevant information to make prediction about the future evolution. Now, given a system, how to properly define the state variables which will allow us to model its evolution as a Markov process is somewhat of an art, and there are no cookbook recipes to do it. However, with a little bit of experience and practice, one quickly gets the required intuitions to do this properly. You will be able to do so in that class.